he went in in January of 2017, and um, instead of losing weight in boot camp, like most guys do, he gained 20 pounds. And I know, he was skinny when he went in. I don't really know. A lot of what he did, he wasn't able to tell me. So I don't really understand much of it. But anytime I needed any kind of geeky stuff with my computer, I'd call him. <laughs> so he was in Korea and um, I, he left sometime, I believe in October. And I got a call um, in the middle of the night, December 6th, and, or was it the 3rd? I don't know, early, early December. And he said, um, don't freak out. Um, I have to get emergency transported in an ambulance um, and I needed an emergency blood transfusion. By the time we got into triage, by the time I, I told them I had to tell them, you know, all of a sudden there were six nurses and doctors I was shoved off to in a corner and they were stabilizing him. I, we didn't know he was unstable. And um, it was hours, about four hours later, when they got him stable. The head oncologist uh, grabbed me and said, can I talk to you in the hallway? And I said, sure. Why'd you bring him here? And I thought, oh gosh, stupid me again. I really didn't understand they were stabilizing him. And I said, I, I, I just, I don't know. His thermometer said he didn't have a fever, but I felt like he did. And I just had a weird gut feeling. And I, I, I don't know. And he grabs my arm and he put his head down and he just shook it. And he said, and he couldn't talk. He said, I, I don't know how to thank you. Your son would have died in his sleep if you hadn't brought him here. And that's when it started to hit home how sick he was. And he said, we, we're not even the right hospital for him. We can't help your son here. We've got to get him. He, he should never have been flown here. We've got to get him to San Antonio. That's the closest, best place. And I said, oh, I rented a car. I can drive. <laughs> I don't know how big Texas is. And, and he's like, almost looked at me like I was crazy. And he goes, no, ma'am, he won't make it. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, it's eight hours. He won't make it. He will die on the way. I said, well, can we hook him up to something and get him in an ambulance? He said, he won't make it. We're searching the United States for a jet to fly your son to San Antonio and we've got to get him there ASAP. The last year and a half that he lived, or 15 months, whatever it was, I got to be with him. I got to know my son in a way that parents don't usually get to know their kids at that age. You know, you're 18, 19, 20, and you take off. We got to know each other in a way um, that I don't think most other parents will ever or usually get to know their kids the ins and outs, the, the ups and downs, but the really intimate stuff that you don't share at that age with your parents and that the parent doesn't share with the kids. You know, I, I was coming to visit him and then last minute um, canceled the plans. He said, no, mom, not yet, not yet. And um, one of the last text messages he sent me that week, just like a couple days before he passed was, you know, stay strong no matter what, mom. He was my son, but I was young when I had him. So he was my, my absolute best friend. And he was like a dad to the boys. Um, so his loss is immense in our lives. But what he gave us was so huge. He had the biggest heart of gold. Such a gift. They've given me a gift of time with my son that I never would have had without them. There was no way in God's green earth that I could have seen him as much as I did without them. Thank you doesn't, it's, it's not enough. I don't even, thank you, it just doesn't say enough, but it's really, it's thank you. In, from the depths, like the deepest part of my heart. I recommend anybody that is in a similar situation apply. You know, go apply and, and see. Don't, I, I kept thinking they're not gonna accept me, they're not gonna accept me. I don't know why. Um, apply, number one. Number two, if you have miles and you're not gonna use them or if, if you, you know, if you could afford to not use them, you could afford to just buy your tickets, please donate your miles because donating those miles means the world to people like me, to our family. What they've given us is just amazing.